build and spend their billions of dollars and then you just improve it by 5%. So let's, let's see if we can do an example. Let's see if we can do an example. And I don't mean to undersell this man because he was a great man, but, but uh, I'm not far off what I'm about to say. Ten years ago, a man stood on a stage, his name was Steve Jobs. And Steve Jobs, the head of Apple, and he decided, because they were selling a lot of iPads, and a lot of iPods, remember they were giving them music, the iPod, everybody had one that's old enough, and they came up with the phone. Now remember, some of you, I know this is impossible to imagine, the iPhone has been around for 10 years. Before 10 years ago, it didn't exist. And Steve Jobs walks onto a stage, and he announces to the world, Apple's going to make a phone, an iPhone, a cell phone. Now, everybody in the stand said, Steve, there's 55 companies making cell phones right now. Not a big, not a big announcement. Not a big announcement. Huh. Okay, well, here's what, here's what my phone does. My phone will make phone calls. So does everybody else's, Steve. Mine will text. So will everybody else's, Steve. It will take pictures. So will everybody else's, Steve. It will do emails. Download music. So will everybody else's, Steve. Everything, you're late to the party. And then the moment, the moment in you guys, how many you want to add? Ah, uh, okay. Good. Okay, so you fell for it. So, okay. So then the moment. Steve, we got it. Check, 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 check. They all do it. And then the moment. And he said, yes, they do all email. And they do all text. And they do all write letters to their mom. But watch this. When you press their A on the board, it's a button. And watch mine. When I press an A, it's glass. That was it. That's all he did. Look at what that. Look at what the phone does. He touched glass instead of plastic. That's his five percent, ladies and gentlemen. That was his five percent, and you guys went crazy. Oh my God! The A is a plastic button or a glass button. Oh my God! Who would have thought that is it? Stop thinking you have to invent anything. Just make it sexy. And he brought sexy to iPhones. And he did it. That was it. And I know every one of you sitting here at one time started this sentence that said, I don't understand. That's so stupid. I don't understand why they don't do this. You probably had a million, if not a billion dollar idea, and you did nothing about it. You did nothing about it. Nike has the best slogan in the world. It says just do it. If you do not do it, it won't happen. So let me just let me just give you a quiz that goes something like this. I'm going to race with my competition. I'm competitive. I'm going to race. We're going to run 100 to our death. There's me and six other people. Me and six other people. That's my competition. On your marks, get set. And on get set, what happens, ladies and gentlemen? I see that my shoe is untied. I can't run a race. It's full. Full throttle with the, the shoelaces undone. So what do I have to do? Time! Time! I need to time my shoelace. Nobody cares that I got a loose shoelace. They don't care. They're not going to wait for me. So I hear as I'm tying my shoelace. Go. Go. And then I get out. And then the, I look and I look at the fans and guess what happened? They're all cheering for me. And they're cheering for me. You know why they're cheering for me? Because I'm in the lead. Now, how is it possible that I'm in the lead of a race with six other people? There's only one way, ladies and gentlemen. The other five people were stupid. And when they let go, they all took a step back. And by default, I was the leader. So, you think you got to be smart to basically get into the lead? No. No. I have won dozens of awards for my toys, especially the, especially the uh, sports figures. And every time they give me a 
a board, they ask the exact same question. Oh my God, Todd, your toys are so realistic. Your sports figures are so realistic. How do you do it? And I give them the same answer, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to give it to you. And if I get too complicated, you can look up on Google because I don't want to go over your head. I use this high tech thing. It's called the camera. And if you use a camera, right, you look it up. If you don't know what it is, if you have use a camera and you hit a button, it takes a photo. And if you take this photo and you put your clay next to it and you don't stop moving your clay so it looks exactly like the photo, then that's how you make it look realistic. Ladies and gentlemen, the question is wrong. The question is not how did I make it look realistic. The question is how did they not? Because the camera has been around for quite some time. And I have people above me, Hasbro and the tower swear on their grave that they were looking at preference. They didn't look at preference, ladies and gentlemen. I used, to, I used to argue with them to the point that I used to put a blank check in my back pocket and I go, I used to go to them, I go, if you can show me the reference to the stuff that you put out in plastic, you can have this blank check and there is a lot of money in that checking account. And I eventually had to throw that check away because nobody was able to take it from me. Because you know why? Because I know for a fact I put Pac-10 baseball. That there's, if you ever had the, the Kenner starting lineup, Derek Jeter, I know for a fact Derek Jeter was never in this coach. Yeah. I never saw that reference. There was no torque, there was no movement, there was no slant, there was nothing. And then, come on, we're Canadians. I used to have guys, these American toy makers, tell me, a Canadian, that they looked at reference to make their hockey toys. Has anybody got any of those starting lineup hockey toys? Here's what they did. They took every single shirt and topped every shirt, every jersey, into the pants of every single figure, every single, and they swore they were looking at pictures within well, their fucking line. <laughs> so I go, so what do you talk about? And you know why they, you know why they talked it in? Ladies and gentlemen, this is easy because I'm in the toy business. Because most hockey jerseys have stripes and it costs three cents to paint those stripes. And somebody else is sitting upstairs saying, hey, we don't paint the stripes. We don't paint the stripes. That we say three cents, we're making a million, and three cents times a million matters. And then I go, yeah, but what about the seal on the captain's shirt? No, we won't pay that, that's another penny times a million. But what about the things here? No, the baseball players didn't have batting gloves. What are you talking about? Every player's been using batting gloves for 50 years, but they put batting gloves because then they can save themselves two cents. Two cents. And then I come along and I put batting gloves on baseball players that have been doing it for 50 years and I put stripes for God's sake on the bottom of the hockey jersey and I'm a genius, right? So if you want to be a genius, hang out with stupid people. This is easy, this is easy stuff. This is easy stuff. So, uh, before we get going here, some place in here. Uh, I've got my dad. My dad is a father. I think he's over here. I'd like to have, introduce my dad, so if any of you guys got any problems with me, it was my dad one day got frisky with mom. And so you got to pin it on him. So dad can stand up. Dad, stand up over here. This is Bob McFarland. Okay. So I admire my dad. He taught me a lot. He taught me a lot over life. We don't have time to go into it. But I'm going to tell you, as, as, as near as well as I think my dad is, Every now and then he does something kind of stupid, right? So I'm going to tell you a horrifying story that you may not respect my dad at the end of this about. So I'm getting deep into comic books and I get the job of Spider-Man. I get to do Spider-Man. I made it Spider-Man. I got the part. I'm a little Canadian guy. I get to do Spider-Man. And my very first issue I do is issue two, 298. Have you guys have seen it? Some of you are old enough. It's a cover that people sort of recognize, got a white background. And so, you know, Dad was quite proud, Mom was quite proud. Here's a gift, let me just tell you, here's a gift that Mom and Dad gave me. That, again, any of you parents that are here with your children, it is a gift. Whether whether you know it or not is a gift that you support what it is that they like, which is keep them, is a gift. When I told my mom 
mom that I want to be an illustrator. They didn't say, ah, come on, you, want to, you should be an engineer, you should be a doctor, a lawyer, whatever. You know what they did? They bought me a drawing table for that Christmas. And I drew every page of Spider-Man, every page, up until I started going digital, every page I'd ever drawn was on that exact same drawing table for over 20 years. The, the table mom and dad gave they, I'm sure they just thought, ah, let's just get him a table. They didn't know it was going to have that much impact. It had a giant impact. So anytime I see parents supporting their kid, I'm, I'm always grateful, grateful for them. So. so anyway, so Dad's pretty proud of his son. His son's doing Spider-Man. Because now he can like go and tell his buddies, like, what does your son do? He draws Spider-Man, which is way better than saying he draws Infinity Inc. Because it means nothing to anybody. So he's sitting there, and then, and then he's like, is there any way, because I used to carry my original artwork, and people sell original artwork, can I have some of your original artwork? Oh, yeah. And so I give my very first page, my very first cover of Amazing Spider-Man, I give it to my dad, because he was proud of his son. I give it to my dad. And so what did my dad do? He was so proud of that, he goes, I'm, I'm going to hang that up. That's my son, that's my boy. And so he goes, I'm going to bit frame on it. So he goes to Kmart. And he's going, I don't know if you guys have seen original artwork, but it's a weird size. So he takes the page to Kmart, and he tries to find a frame for it, and he can't find a frame for it, because there's no frame to Kmart, at Kmart, that fit this page. So he got the closest thing. And then he went home, bought the $12 frame, and then he began to cut the cover to fit <laughs> dollar frame. <laughs> and so, if you ever see pictures of the original artwork of Spider-Man 298, and you can see that it looks like something's missing, because it is missing. Because <laughs> my dad made that $200,000 piece for his $12 frame, and uh, I, I, I go, wow. This is just what moms and dads do. They don't, they're just proud. They don't care that they just torched away their inheritance for the rest of the kids. And they did it there. So he, 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 he began to do it. So let's see if we can, let's see if we can come back uh, a little bit. And, and let me finish up a little bit. Uh, what time is it here? How much time do we have? Four, five. Yeah, box time. We can open it up. So let me get back. Let me.